People in 43 cities are drinking forever chemicals in their tap water, screams headlines from pretty much every mainstream media outlet in the country, like this one on BuzzFeed. Terrifying, except it's not really. I mean, depending on what you personally find terrifying, maybe you think cockroaches are terrifying. I don't. Concerning? Yes. Terrifying? I wouldn't set my house on fire to get rid of them. It's the same here. Uh, you should be concerned about it, but this is classic fear mongering. And I knew it as soon as I saw the source of all of these articles, the Environmental Working Group. I first became familiar with the EWG like at least a decade ago when I started seeing news stories cautioning people that lipstick was dangerous because of the amount of lead in it. I had started Skeptic a few years prior to that, and I was starting to uh, give talks around the world, and people wanted me to talk about stories that directly affected women, and this seemed perfect. It's science, it's uh, it affects women, so I looked into it, and what I found was that the EWG grossly exaggerated the problem. Uh, The amount of lead they found in lipstick wasn't actually that big of a deal, unless you were, like, regularly eating an entire tube of lipstick for breakfast, and lunch, and dinner, maybe a light bedtime snack. But they were right that it was something to be vaguely concerned about, uh, because the United States government wasn't doing a good job of making sure cosmetics manufacturers kept dangerous things out of their products. There was basically no process in place to protect consumers if something bad did end up in a cosmetics product. And that isn't such a great idea when these are things that people are slathering on their skin or lining their delicate eyeballs, uh, or in my case, straight up stabbing ourselves in the eyeballs with it. Eyeliner, my mortal enemy. Over the years, it seemed like every time I saw a scaremongering news story about chemicals and products that may or may not be bad for people, EWG seemed to be behind it. Back in 2016, for instance, the skeptic sister site Grounded Parents called out EWG for their bullshit sunscreen scaremongering. Uh, Jenny Splinter, the writer over there, pointed out that EWG is very biased because they themselves make money selling all natural products that replace the ones that they're telling consumers are dangerous. And their board is made up of quacks and people with ties to the natural skincare industry. So here we are again. This time, Forever Chemicals are the culprit. That's the catchy, scary nickname given to uh, per and polyfluoroalkyl substances, aka PFAS chemicals. EWG says that they found these chemicals in drinking water in dozens of American cities and that this is concerning because there is, quote, some evidence of links to cancer and low fertility. Hmm. You would know PFAS for their use in non-stick coatings and uh, waterproofing on boots and jackets, but they're actually so much more common than that. They're found in things like firefighting foam, candy wrappers, cosmetics, uh, plastic manufacturing, wire insulation, and basically anything that is needed to resist water or oil. Because they're so widely used, and uh, because most of them do not easily break down, they do get into our soil, our water supply, and yes, even our blood. Is this a bad thing? Well, I mean, it's probably not a good thing. Adding uh, things like this to our body is rarely found to give us superpowers. I mean, it's not gamma radiation. Uh, But whether or not it causes real harm, and if so, how much harm remains to be seen. First of all, you have to realize that talking about PFAS chemicals is kind of like talking about birds. Like, you could say birds are having a negative impact on your recent car paint job, but you're not talking about all birds in that instance. Penguins are birds, and they are probably not the ones that are shitting on your car. Unless, of course, you live in Antarctica or Melbourne or some other equally ridiculous place. The term PFAS encompasses hundreds of different chemicals, each with their own job and their own effect on the environment and the human body. 
So when we talk about PFAS, we're talking about birds. And if you're picturing a tiny sparrow, I might actually be talking about an eight foot ostrich. If you're talking about how much damage a bird can do, I assure you that you're going to want to know whether you're getting pecked by a sparrow or kicked in the gut by an ostrich. So there are hundreds of PFAS chemicals currently in production and leaching into our environment. And scientists haven't really had the chance to rigorously test any of them, really. Uh, so the, the very real problem here with PFAS, the one that you might actually want to be concerned about, is that the U.S. government doesn't really mind manufacturers using a new, untested on humans chemical until it starts causing problems in the general population. It's more of a don't ask permission, beg forgiveness sort of deal that helps products get to market faster at the possible expense of consumers' health and well-being. Yay, capitalism! Scientists know that PFAS chemicals are ending up in our environment and in our bodies, and they've known this for quite some time. That's not to say that a redundant study like this is unwanted. More research on a thing like this is always good, uh, confirming what we already know or contradicting previous research. In this case, uh, it's the former, and that's fine. It's reinforcing what scientists already knew. What's not fine is EWS using that research to fearmonger. Scientists are still studying how PFAS impact our health and environment. Yes, some PFAS chemicals may do damage. For instance, from 2005 to 2013, three epidemiologists studied the link between one particular PFAS known as PFOA and diseases, and they found a probable link between PFOA and high cholesterol, ulcerative colitis, thyroid disease, testicular cancer, kidney cancer, and pregnancy-induced hypertension. Does that mean that PFOA causes all of those things? No. Uh, it just means one study found a link. And it doesn't mean that, for instance, researchers know how PFOA would cause those diseases. And it certainly doesn't show any kind of cause and effect relationship, just a possible link. Uh, this was also a probable link found in people living in a town around an industrial plant that was producing PFOA. So even if it is a causal relationship, it might not be relevant to the average person who happens to use a metal spatula on their nonstick pan while making eggs in the morning, which you shouldn't do. Honestly, go to a yard sale, get yourself a cast iron pan like a proper adult. And that brings me to my final point. As scientists continue to try to figure out how PFAS chemicals affect humans and our environment, you can figure out what is really essential to you when it comes to products that use PFAS. Uh, for instance, do you really need that nonstick pan? Do you need all of your coats and jackets and boots to be waterproof? Do you need to throw away that waterproof tent just because it got a little hole in it or could you patch it up? Can you buy those things secondhand? Can you spend a little more to buy well-made products from retailers with a lifetime guarantee so that you don't have to throw your things away when they start to fall apart or when they're just not trendy anymore. Are there little ways that you personally can cut down on the number of PFAS chemicals in your life and the number that will be used in the manufacturing of the things you buy? That's worth thinking about. So that's the takeaway here for the average person and not whatever the environmental working group wants you to do, which is probably panic and buy their things instead. As usual, please follow the advice of my Magrathian whale. Don't panic. <laughs>